I am your host, Fat Dag, and you're listening to Wise Advice. My weight loss journey failed when I focused on how. It wasn't until I switched my focus to why that I truly transformed myself. Join the show on the web at fatdag.com and follow along on Twitter and Instagram at Wise Advice. Send in your comments, your questions, and your celebrations, and I'll include them as part of the show. But before we dive in, remember, when you're out of points, stop eating points. Hey, I'm honored to be your wingman as we walk through this journey together, because I believe in you. Well, hello, welcome to episode 53 of Wise Advice, and got some really exciting news here uh, regarding Operation Fat Dag, and I got a, I got a couple emails that came into my inbox, and uh you know, you guys, as you know, you send in your letters, and I'm going to hand deliver them tomorrow on the 23rd of May. So depending on when you're listening, uh, again, bulk of the listeners, it sounds like we get this the day that's released. But for those of you who kind of are getting caught up, uh, I asked for some letters. You guys sent in, uh, you know, I don't even know. The stack is probably 120, 130 letters tall. And uh, I'm going through them and, and just going to hand them out to them and offer them words of encouragement and so I cannot thank you enough for that. I put it on fatdag.com under the blog post to so go read about that. But what was really cool is um, my new best friends on the internet, Withings, Withings reached out to me and said, hey, we want to be a part of this. And and we see that you weigh yourself daily. We see that the scale is instrumental in what you do. Uh, we'd like to offer you uh, some product to give to them uh, to hand out at your event. So so they sent me this beautiful box, and, uh, and I'm going to have an opportunity to hand that out So. So there, along with you guys, uh, are my absolutely new best friends on the internet. So thanks to Withings, uh, and thanks to those of you on Connect, and thanks to all the wingmen out there. Uh, we're going to have a great time, and I'll, uh, tomorrow night I'll come back on Facebook Live, uh, and we'll get this thing. Uh, I'll give you a recap. I'll let you know how it went. So if you're listening on the 23rd, uh, that evening at 10 p.m. Eastern, Go back to facebook.com slash wise advice and we'll, we'll uh, do a recap of how the entire event went, uh, and go from there. So that catches you up. Uh, the Google app is out there. As you know, the Android app is out ready. The Apple app, I got some email back that it should be soon. I'm not sure what the holdup is there, but pretty soon you'll be able to go to the Apple store and download wise advice as an app. But for now, it's still Android users are rocking it strong. And thank you to all the Android users out there who are killing it. Uh, continue to be uh, honored to be your wingman and working with you on this. So, uh, First up in the queue here, Judy writes in. Judy says, hi, Mike. Uh, first off, love your podcast and your whole Weight Watchers approach. Second, this is very hard to write. I've been a member of Weight Watchers since the early 60s. I reached goal 13 times and immediately went to McDonald's every time and never made it to Lifetime. That is a whole other story. Then in January 2009, on New Year's Eve, watching the ball fall again, I prayed that I would never see another New Year's Eve at this weight. I rejoined Weight Watchers on January 2, 2009, and in February I had already gained 10 pounds. I quit smoking after 40 years. I felt wonderful and thought, this is the year. But by March, I'd been laid off another uh, off after 20 years at our wonderful computer company, I continued to go to all my meetings, and on October 31st, my leader said, Okay, it's October 31st. You can stay the same by January 1st. You can lose weight, or you can maintain. It's up to you. I thought, okay, it is up to me. Let's see what I can do. I am so tired of watching that ball fall in Times Square and being so sad and saying, Okay, maybe I can lose weight this year. So I started at 5'1", 217, and for the next 15 months, that's all I thought about. I lost 85 pounds and I felt wonderful. Weight Watchers was so impressed they hired me as a receptionist and I love it. But now it's 2017 and I have 10 or 15 pounds. Members tell me I motivate them so much. I look so much better, but sometimes I feel like such a fraud at my meetings. Everyone's saying how wonderful I look, but inside I'm dying because I'm just barely holding on. Any words of encouragement that you can give me would be greatly appreciated. Thanks for everything you do for us. Uh, Judy out of Vero Beach, Florida. Well, Judy, um, here's a couple things for you is, is how I knew this was different for me is that when I reached goal, uh, just like you, I joined a handful of times and I joined five different times. And so every time that I, I got to a point that I felt complacent, I did the same as you. I went back to my old eating habits. Uh, this particular time when I knew that it was different is when I packed a lunch and I brought my lunch and I ate a turkey sandwich after passing a PT test. So I knew at that point things were different. 
so one of the things I want you to do is I want you to continue to stay focused. You, you've, you've lost 85 pounds. That does not happen by accident. You clearly have the ability to get this done. You clearly know how to do it. You clearly are tapped into your why. The problem is, and the difficulty that we're dealing with, is that life takes over. Life, you know, when we have a food addiction, life isn't kind to us. So one of the things that I would challenge you to do is I would challenge you to, to you can work the plan really well. You obviously can do that. And so the choices that you make will get you to your goal. It's the lifestyle adjustment that you make that'll keep you to your goal. You're, we're going to constantly battle the sugar addiction. We're going to constantly battle the junk food addiction. And we can only keep it at bay for so long. So we have the option of keeping it at bay or putting it to bed. If we put it to bed, then that whole new lifestyle takes over, the new eating habits take over, and that's when the true magic happens. So uh, I think barely holding on is absolutely normal. You're, you're doing fantastic job. You recognize that you, that you think that you're barely holding on, but I think deep down you understand exactly what's going on. And so, so when you say you're barely holding on, what I want you to do is I want you to tap into day one. I want you to think about that New Year's Eve ball. I want you to think about why you joined. And I want to think about everything you did to get to 85 pounds down. You said in your email that you stayed focused. You were completely focused. And that's what it takes to win. It also takes that same level of focus to maintain it. The difficult thing is, is that the focus that you need to maintain it also has to be fo- balanced with the focus it takes to live your life. So you're doing just fine. You absolutely are. Give yourself some credit. Uh, give yourself some, some pat on the back for losing 85 pounds because you're not a fraud. This is absolutely hard work. You've proven it can be done, and you're such an inspiration to those members. They need you, they rely on you, and they're counting on you to get it done. So thanks for your email. Way to go. Keep up the fantastic work. Very proud of you. Kim writes in. She says, uh, Dear Fat Dag, I'm a longtime listener, first-time emailer. When I'm on Connect, my advice is always to listen to your podcast. It has helped me reboot my efforts. My workout partner decided to take a break in in December, and I did too. For me, working out keeps my weight kind of stable. I also quit going to Weight Watcher meetings because of my work schedule. I could have gone to a different one, but I didn't. I finally got up to the nerve to go back because my pants were getting tight. Your podcast got me to track every single thing, even the sugar I put on my Kodiak cakes. I've been back since April 14th, and my weigh-ins went like this. First, I lost 1.8. Second, I lost 2.2. Third, I lost 3.2. That was 7.3 pounds lost in three weigh-ins. Usually when I go back, I start with bigger losses, and they get smaller. Not this time, sir. I keep getting better. I listen to your podcast over and over. I love them all. The one that really hit home was the tracking ketchup. I was not very accurate on my tracking, and it showed because I've been teetering on losing the same five pounds over and over. It was frustrating. Now I know that I didn't lose those 7.3 pounds on accident. I tracked, exercised, and I went to meetings. I I used to have the most lovely leader named Erin. I could sit and listen to her, to her over and over. My new leader, not so much. Last week, we had a sub who talked about her fear of spiders and snakes for 15 minutes. She is a horrible as a leader. She was very nice, but ugh, I was getting so agitated that I wanted to walk out. Then I thought, no, I want to become a leader. That is my new goal besides lifetime. I am a teacher, so teaching becomes natural to me. I want to be their cheer I want to be their cheerleaders. They are so afraid of connect and podcast. I want to teach them. So I will teach them as soon as I lose ten more pounds on purpose, then keep it off for six weeks. I love getting the blue dot for some reason. I want to reach uh, I want to teach them about that as well. One blue dot leads to more blue dots. I want to get our group moving too. They are mostly people who are over the age of sixty, so I have to know my audience. I am confident in making this happen. I'm going to turn my lemons into lemonade. Thank you for all your inspiration and your guidance. You are on it. Thanks for being brave enough to serve our country. Sincerely, Kim. Kim, uh, thanks for your email. Uh, Very cool. Tracking ketchup was absolutely key for me. And if you haven't heard that episode uh, early on, I talk about tracking ketchup. And and the reason that's important is that teaches you how to eat. If, if If you stop eating points when you're out of points and you track everything you've eaten, at some point you have to figure out some new things to eat in order to make this lifestyle work. 
Tracking ketchup for me did that. Tracking ketchup t- taught me to start eating salad. Uh, and without those two two rules of tracking ketchup and then uh, stopping when I was at a point, I wouldn't have had that uh, opportunity. Now, hey, I'm, I'm absolutely sorry about your, your leader sub, but here's what I want to say about that. You know, there are billions of people on the planet and uh, not not everybody's going to jive with everybody else. I'm sure somewhere in that room, someone was absolutely thrilled to hear a conversation about how spiders and snakes uh, leads to a weight gain or, or leads to overeating or leads to fear. I'm sure it plays in to some extent. I also applaud you for wanting to be a leader because being a leader is hard work. Uh, you know, it, it, tr- you know, trust me, I've been doing it now for a little while. And then when you're in that room and you got to try and balance a conversation, you got 30, 40, 50, 60 people in the room, whatever it takes. Uh, and you have to try and find a level playing field to bring it, you bring it up to everybody's speed. Extremely difficult to do. So I applaud you for wanting to take that on. Uh, cut your sub some slack, right? She, she's out there doing it and, uh, she's out there giving it her best. I understand that maybe that part didn't resonate with you, but that's the time when you sit quietly. That's the time when you sit and focus and you, and you, then you internalize and you say, you know, I can do this. And that's where you come to the real, realization, uh, that you want to be a leader. But I'm absolutely proud of you. 7.3 pounds and three weigh-ins. That's incredible work. It doesn't happen by accident. And what you're seeing is you're seeing that the program works. You're seeing that as you track, as you earn your blue dots, as you get some exercise and you stay on the plan, the plan actually works. So you absolutely have the ability to do this. When you get to, you know, three weeks into it down 7.3 pounds, you've proven a handful of things. You've proven you can do this. You've proven the program works. And so now it's just a matter of time. It's just a matter of getting it done. So thanks for your email. Keep up the great work uh, and let me know how it goes. And good luck with your application to Weight Watchers. It'd be very, very, very cool. Deb out of Boston, Massachusetts writes in. She says, hi there. I am new to your podcast and I'm on number 13 and really enjoying it. And it's really help, really helping me keep my focus. I really like how you talk about complacency and about doing the best you can, podcast number eight. It really hits home for me. I was about 20 pounds down last May and feeling awesome. I then hit some crazy times, some significant challenges in my personal life with a very sick 10-year-old son in and out of hospitals for several months, and my job is crazy, requiring many long nights and an insane amount of travel. At times, I felt like I would snap and sometimes I did, it was a daily challenge just to hold it all together. And at these times, I gave myself the grace to not beat myself up for not losing, that I couldn't prioritize that right now, and my goal was not to gain. I kept attending meetings and getting weighed in, and it was tough to see my friends who started with me and are now down 60 pounds, and I'm at the same weight. But I am so proud of myself that I am the same weight because if I didn't stay connected to Weight Watchers during these times... I would have gained 30 plus pounds. I have no doubt. Work travel is still nuts, but my son is doing better now. I have more time and energy and focused. Uh, I'm back in the game, tracking on Connect Daily, rocking my meal prep, etc. So I just want to reiterate that do your best and to love yourself. I want to share this with the people and tell them that not everyone is going to lose 80 pounds in a year, and that's okay. Thanks for your podcast. It's really helping to keep my head in the game. I listen every day trying to catch up to your current podcast. Thanks. Take care, Deb. Deb, uh, first off, sorry to hear about your son, and I'm, I'm glad to hear that he's doing better. That That is absolutely one of the life's challenges that we have no control over, uh, and that's certainly going to have an impact into our stress level, and as we know, that, that stress level impacts our the rest of our lives. So, so that is uh, – that is good news that he's back on the mend, and I continue to hope that that continues to go well for him. So, now when you talk about um, you know your you know, your the folks who are in your meeting who have lost and 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 you feel like that man, I wish I could have done as well. Well, here's the deal: um, this is not a winner take all kind of game. You know, the, there isn't one person in the meeting that's going to lose all the weight. Every single person in that meeting room has the same ability. So you're right. You got to stay focused. You got to stay into the game. You got to continue going to the meetings. You have to stay, you stay in your lane, right? You have to focus on you. You said it. You have to love yourself enough to continue on the journey and you have to do your best, knowing that your best is going to change every day, knowing that some days your best is not going to look like your best from the day before or the week before, but you've got to stay mindful to it. So as you continue to work the program, as you continue to work this thing, I want you to know a couple things. You continue to know that the plan works. Uh, you know that you know what it takes to get there. 
and you're clearly on the path. So keep up the great work. Let's get there. Uh, your subject says that you're in the Turtle Club, and I, and I know that when you know, with a little bit of focus, a little bit of discipline, a little bit of dedication, uh, we can get ramped up back in the right direction. So thank you. Thank you for that. Next up, Kathy. Kathy out of Cedar Lake, Indiana, writes a uh, question for Lifetime. Thank you to you and your family for your service to our country and all of us for all the help your podcast give me in my journey. When I finally reached Lifetime, 40 pounds lost, 20 to go, do you need to stay within two pounds of your goal or can you keep losing as long as you stay within the healthy weight range? As an example, healthy weight, weight range starts at 164 for my height, but I'd like to be 160 or a little less. Can you explain the rules a little? Well, Kathy, uh, I can explain the rules, uh, but here's what I'm going to explain. I'm going to explain something a little different to you. And what you want to do, Kathy, you want to hop on that scale. And when you get your weight, before you're going to know before you even get on the scale, let's say. Before you get on the scale, you're going to know, you know what? I don't know what the scale is going to say, but I don't want to weigh any less than I do right now. That is what goal is. So we can't continue to play numbers with the scale. Uh, I'm sorry, we can't continue to play games with the numbers on the scale. If you hop on the scale and it's 164 and you say you want to be 160, then reset your goal to where you want to be. Hop on the scale knowing that you don't want to lose any weight and then work to maintain that number. Now, as you continue, some people are adding strength training. I'm doing that as well. So then at that point, maybe you fluctuate the number. But, but we've got to learn and we've got to remember this has nothing to do with the number on the scale. It's mostly about a feeling. It's mostly about how you look, and, and you have to own that. So as far as the rules go, yeah, you have to be within plus or minus two pounds. But, but if you want to continue losing, then my highly encouragement would be is that you set your goal where a point where you're happy. When you hop on the scale and you say, I've lost enough weight, I don't want to lose another single pound, at that point, look at your leader and say, what does the scale say? That's your goal weight. That's where you want to be. That's where you can be. So... Kathy, thanks for your email. Appreciate that. Um, folks, what are you celebrating? Uh, what, you know, let's share it on the air. Go to fatdag.com. Click on Listen Now. Send in your celebrations, your comments. I'll work them in as part of the show. Uh, go ahead. You know, I really want you to be proud of what you're doing. What you're doing is extremely hard work. It takes complete focus. You have to kind of put everything else aside, and you have to stay focused on the game, and you're doing it. If you're in the game, and you're working the program, and you're having success... It's just a matter of now rebalancing that into your life, continuing all of what you're doing, and moving on. So, can thank you for all your support. Continue to share the podcast. If you haven't gotten the app already in the Android store, get the Android app. But that's going to do it for this time. Remember that losing weight, getting healthy, has absolutely nothing to do with luck. You have to remain disciplined and focused. Set your sights on your goal and go after it. I wish you good focus. <laughs> <laughs>